And we begin tonight with Trump's legal limbo. The president-elect was set to be one step closer to actually knowing his fate in his hush money case today, but that's not how things played out, right, Lindsay? That's right, Chris. Instead, Judge Juan Mershon agreed to give Trump's legal team and the prosecution another week to hash out how to proceed now that Trump has been elected. And this is really uncharted territory, Chris. All parties will be back in court in one week on November 19th to make new arguments about what's next. And you'll remember back in May, Trump was convicted on 34 federal counts for falsifying business records. But the Supreme Court also ruled this summer that a president should receive broad immunity from official acts carried out while they are in office. So here to help us better understand what's next is someone who has handled several high profile cases, federal defense attorney Ronald Chapman. Ronald, thank you for being here. So Judge Mershon was expected to decide whether to overturn Trump's conviction or possibly set a new trial but neither happened today. So what's next? Well, what's next is that Judge Mershon's going to have to make a decision on this. The reality is that prior to the trial happening in this case, they should have determined whether or not official acts were going to be part of the evidence. Alvin Bragg submitted official acts as evidence. There's a very good basis for dismissal, but Judge Mershon needs a bit more time to figure this out. And so he just today has delayed a lot of the dates in this case so that he can make sure that he makes the appropriate ruling, which I, I certainly support. And it's interesting here because New York Attorney's General Letitia James, she said last week that her office isn't backing down. So ultimately, who holds the power here? It's quite a fiery statement. Well, I'd, I'd say definitely Trump has the Trump card in this case. He was elected president. He's about to take office. We have an Office of Legal Counsel memo that specifically indicates that a sitting president should not be indicted or prosecuted for an offense. We also have pretty good precedent in that regard, even related to civil cases from the Paula Jones case, if you recall, when Bill Clinton was in office. The reality is, is that no case should be interfering with the election of Donald Trump and his ability to serve in office, and there should be a standstill on every single one of these cases. Ronald, do you think that this is headed to the Supreme Court eventually? I think certainly there's going to be something bubbling back up to the Supreme Court if any of these entities, Fulton County, Judge Mershon in New York, uh, or Attorney General Letitia James elects to proceed with some of these issues. I certainly could see that happening. I would say, though, the New York Court of Appeals, the appellate court there, is going to make quick work of the civil case and civil judgment um, brought by it, um, Attorney General James. Um, I think they're probably going to make quick work of dismissing it based on the oral arguments that have already occurred. You know, it sounds crazy, but we're talking about a convicted felon who was just elected president. Now, his defense team and the DA will have different views on the appropriate next steps in this case, other than what each case, other than what each side, I guess, will argue. What else will factor into the judge's decision, do you think? Well, I think uh, something very important to re remember is before Donald Trump gets sentenced, he's not going to be considered a convicted felon. The reality is he hasn't had the ability to appeal to a court of competent jurisdiction, and he certainly hasn't been sentenced, meaning there's been no judgment entered. But when it comes to the arguments here, it would have been simple for Judge Mershon to halt that prosecution pending the Supreme Court's ruling, which everybody knew was going to come down. They decided to rush the case forward with a lot of salacious information designed to impact the election. That certainly is going to hold a lot of water for an appellate court, and they should have stood down as soon as the Supreme Court elected to take the immunity case. So most of Trump's legal cases seem to be falling apart. In the January 6th case, special counsel Jack Smith is said to be winding down the investigation, and he's asked the DOJ for guidance there. The classified documents case in Florida, well, that one's already been dismissed. And in Georgia, the election interference case has been delayed several times due to the Fulton County District Attorney Fonnie Willis. So would, some may say that, you know, these delays and these dismissals tell us that these cases really had no validity all along. But others may argue, if you're president, you're kind of untouchable. So, so Ronald, who's wrong here? 
Well, that's going to be that's going to be really tough to parse out. I would say if we look at the cases one by one, I would say that the classified documents case was probably going to be the one that should have hurt Donald Trump the most. That being said, we had President Biden engage in very similar conduct, and that's not traditionally something we bring against a president. The rest of the prosecutions, it's hard to look at them and say that they are anything but political given the way that they came down. Specifically, the New York prosecution, Judge Mershon, we have uh, falsification of records allegedly to cover up something, but we're not clear what that is, and the jury wasn't even allowed to tell us. It's a very strange case brought for very strange reasons. I think that the January 6th prosecution also very problematic because interfering with an election or election denying has never been a crime in the United States, and that was a very difficult call for Jack Smith, but he decided to bring a case and he probably shouldn't have. Real quick, where does Stormy Daniels fall into all of this? She was ordered to pay Trump's legal fees, totaling $560,000 in a failed defamation lawsuit. If this hush money case gets dropped, what does that mean for her? Well, I wouldn't want to be Michael Cohen or Stormy Daniels in this instance. It looks like they're the two big losers in this entire scenario. If she has a judgment to pay, she's going to have to pay it. Bankruptcy is sometimes an option, but it's very difficult to get away from it. Remember what Trump had to do to try to pay his judgment. That's exactly what she should have to do to try to pay a judgment in New York or get bond to appeal. And the reality is I don't think she's going to be able to pay it. And so there may be some bankruptcy in the future for Stormy Daniels. Ronald Chapman, thank you very much for your insight tonight. Meanwhile.